This is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Chicken Head Chronicles, brought to you by 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. Today, I want to talk about a really cool device. This device is the da -da -da, SD to IEC. Now, I assume if you're watching this channel, you've probably at least heard of these devices that allow you to use an SD card in place of something like a 1541 or a 1571 drive for your 8-bit Commodore computer. Uh, the one that I have, let me show you, I got the white one. I got this from The Future Was 8-Bit. These guys are fantastic. They sell so many cool products on their website. Uh, but one of the things they're popular for is selling the SD to uh, IEC interface. Now, I specifically got the one that has both the tape port power adapter and the tape port power adapter for the Plus 4 or the Commodore 16. Since I have one of those two, I wanted to do both of them. Now, the only purpose of this part of it is to get five volts of power into the little adapter here. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have gotten the USB interface because I'm constantly moving this thing around, unplugging it from one device, plugging it into another, doing different things on my different devices. Probably just sh should have stuck with the, the USB interface, but live and learn. Maybe I'll just get a second one. Now, this one came with a 16 gigabyte SD card and somehow through the magic inside of here the Commodore 64 sees the entire capacity of the card. It's just absolutely incredible. Now I did also order with it the Epix fast load cartridge. Now this really is only useful on the Commodore 64. I have used it on my Commodore 128 uh, with this interface, but I end up having, you know, it just, you put this in, it just ends up booting right into 64 mode. So while I've been playing with it, I've been going straight into C64 mode uh, on my 64 and using the Epix fast load cartridge. Speeds things up pretty substantially. Let me show you how we hook this little guy up. In this situation, I'm going to hook it up directly to my 1541 drive. Uh, I've got a tan 1541, I've got a white 1541 for my VIC-20, and I've got a couple of 1571 drives for my Commodore 128. But in this case, I'm plugging it in directly to my 1541 drive. So first we'll put the Epix fast load cartridge in. It just goes in the cartridge slot. Now, this will go into the tape drive connector. Notice it's got a little symbol on there that says top Make sure you put it in the correct way into the tape drive adapter. And then this, the IEC connector, can just daisy chain right up to my 1541 drive. Plugs right in. Now one of the things I would love is a longer connector here because I have to be really really close. I've just got a couple of inches uh, right here that I can connect my tape drive adapter to. This is another reason I think I should have gotten the USB adapter. So that's it there. Now when we turn on the C64, let me show you what we get. Okay, so you'll notice as soon as I turn on the C64 it says fast load right under, underneath the ready prompt. That just tells us that the fast load cartridge is loaded up and ready to go. Now by default, the SD to IEC interface comes set up as device eight. So if you try and daisy chain it along with your 1541 drive, it's not gonna work. It's gonna have two devices as device eight. So what I did is I moved mine to device 10. I also use it with my Commodore 128, and I have two 1571 drives, eight and nine, 
and so I made this device 10 to make it easy to access. Now, to do that, it comes with some really nice instructions. Here it comes with a nice instruction sheet on exactly how to change your device address. You can change it temporarily, or you can change it permanently, just by using some open commands. Now, if we want to change the address of it to, say, address 9, address 10, address 11, whatever you want to do, these are the commands you use. We use open 1, 8, 15, 15, quotes u0 greater than quote plus chr dollar sign parentheses and then the new number so now this would change it uh, if it was device 8 it would change it to device 9 and then colon close 1 now basically what you're doing is you're opening up a channel to the drive uh, that's connected to port 8 you're sending a command telling it to switch the device to port number 9 to you know comma 9 and then you're closing the device so if I were to do that it would give me a ready prompt after that. Now, you do that, and that's just a temporary fix. It changes it to uh, device 9 until the next time you, you power cycle it. To write it to the ROM of the little device, what we do to the EEPROM, we would uh, open 1, 9. Now, you notice this is going to the new device number, number 15 comma x w quote quote x w quote here let me try to do that without holding the shift key down colon close one now you're opening them up opening up device nine sending it a command uh, called x w and then giving it the close command and that's going to write the EEPROM on the device. So now permanently this little guy is going to be device 9. All right, now I'm going to keep mine as 10, so I'm not going to actually going to execute those commands. Now another cool feature of the Epix fast load cartridge is it has a reset button. Hit the button on the cartridge, resets it back. Okay, by default, this little SD reader, by default, the SD to IEC reader, if you buy it with the SD card, is going to come with a utility uh, called FB, which is File Browser. Now, File Browser works on a Commodore 64, Commodore 128, VIC-20, Commodore 16, and Plus 4. And the cool thing about it is you can just load up this program called FB, comma 10, comma 1, and of course, I'm using uh, comma 10 because I have it as device number 10. It's going to load it up, and as soon as you run it, it detects I'm running it on a C64. If you were to load that same program on a VIC-20, it would load up the VIC-20 version. Now, if you look here, you can see there's File Browser, File Browser 128, 16, 20, the 3K and the 8K version, file browser 64, uh, it's going to load the appropriate file browser program. Now this is a great program just for going in and taking a look at the files that are on this device. Everything right now is in the CBM directory. See how I'm using the cursor keys to go up and down. When I go to a directory, it will actually tell me right there that that is an actual directory, just like you'd have on a Windows machine. Yes, the 8-bit Commodores did support directories. We just never used them. Hit Enter to go in there. C128 files are here. Plus 4 files, C64 files, VIC-20 files. Since this is on a C64, we're going to go into the C64 folder. So it supports 
regular PRG files like this one here, which is just a regular Commodore 64 file, or it will support actual .d64 files, which represent an entire disk. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. We're going to go in the A folder. Here I've downloaded a bunch of uh, compilations of arcade games, and they're in these arcade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. .d64. These are actual Commodore 64 disk images here. When you want to look inside one, just go ahead and highlight it, hit the enter key, and it's going to tell you what's in that folder. This is exactly the same thing that we're going to see if we were to look on an actual 1541 drive of these files. You can run any of these, again, just by highlighting them. I'm using the cursor keys. And if you were hit to hit enter, it would automatically, in this case, load burger time. Now let me show you the other cool thing about this. Again, this is a D64 file. We're inside of it, inside the SD. Now let's quit out of the program. We're going to load dollar sign comma 10. It's going to read the little SD to IEC. We can list that. And it thinks, the Commodore 64 thinks, that that is the disk that's currently loaded. That specific disk is the one that's currently loaded into this virtual 1541 drive. From here, we could also just load, quote, burger time. Now, when it's finished loading, we just run it like normal. Look at that. Burger time. And there's my little dude being chased by sausages and eggs, just like you'd expect. Now, when you get back to your regular C64 screen, in general, it's still going to think that it's in that particular folder. Yep, it still thinks it's in the folder, even though I did a reset. Now, on top of the device, right at the end, there's a reset button at the very back. Hit that little reset button. It flashes green and red for a second. And now it's going to go back to the root folder. Of the SD to IEC device. See, it, I hit reset on the device. It doesn't reset the Commodore 64. It just resets the folder we're in. And we could execute things from here too. Now, so we've seen a little bit about what the file brow browser program can do for going back and forth in directories, launching programs, uh, going inside of D64 files. There are also some other programs that you download separately, and I'll put links in the descriptions for these. This program called DC64, DC128, 1280, etc. That's draw copy, DRA copy. 64, draw copy 128. This is a program uh, written by uh, a gentleman, and I, this was last, this version was last updated in 2009, but it's actually a really, really nice program. Let me show you how it works. DC 64, 10. And through the magic of cutting and editing in Adobe Premiere, it's already loaded. Type run. Now what we're going to see here are a couple of different columns. In the top, it's showing us what's in drive 8, which is my actual physical 1541 drive. I actually have these programs right in there. At the bottom here, you see it says disk 9, no directory. So there is no disk 9. Now, I'm going to use the left arrow key on the keyboard, that's on the top left, to switch between these two folders, drive 8, drive 9. See how I switch there? 
Now it's highlighting drive 9. Now over here it's telling us to change the device. We hit F2, so that's Shift F1. Now it's showing device 10. Refresh the directory. And look at that. We can see our entire SD to, to IEC device right in here. Again, using the cursor keys, we can go in here. There's C64. There's drive A, or letter A. Now watch what I can do here. Okay, now I just opened up disk 5. It's got Donkey Kong, Chucky Egg, Pencil Boot, Designer Pencil. If I want to, I can execute and run these files right from here. F7 runs it. But what I want to do is actually copy this disk the virtual disk on the SD to IEC and put it on a real 1541 disk. So here we've got a, a disk. If we want to format it first, we put the disk in the 1541 drive. Now notice what I have to do here. I'm switching back to the top, uh, back up to device 8. Now I can hit F to format the disk. First, let's refresh it and see what's on the disk now. Yep, one of them. So we're going to format the disk. We hit F, format, yes. New name, we're going to call this Arcade 5,A5. And it will do its 1541 magic and format the disk. Now that our disk format is done. I'm still highlighted up here. There's drive 8, device 8, RK5, which is what I named it. We'll do an F1 for a directory. Make sure it's blank. Great. Now, I'm using the arrow key to move down again. Now we're back down to the bottom. That's what I want to copy to device 8. So we're in device 10 to device 8. We've got an option F8 disk copy. Shift F8 Copy disk from device 10 to device 8. That seems reasonable, but always double check that and make sure you're not accidentally going to overwrite something. Always double check it. Hit yes. And now this actually takes maybe 10, 15 minutes or so to do, so I will not bore you by showing you all of this. So when the copy is complete, when the D64 file has been completely copied over to the 1541 disk, it'll tell you to press a key. Now we'll hit our little arrow, go back to drive 8, hit F1 to refresh, and looky there. There's the absolute copy of the disk. So if you're looking for a way to take D64 files and make actual floppies from them for whatever reason, Draw copy is a great utility in conjunction with the SD to IEC. There's also a lot of other features that this little guy has with it. Uh, you can copy individual files. So let's say you've got a disk in drive 8 and a disk in drive 10, and you want to copy over just the Chuck Yeg files. You can hit the space bar to highlight those three, see how it puts the little arrow next to them. Then we can hit C to copy the files. Boom, it'll copy them right over to the other drive. Now I want to show you a slightly newer but very different version of this program. So it's, it's really not too bad. Now that it's loaded, we'll run it. Now the first thing you'll notice when we execute this program is that it is a single screen. It does not have the split screen. So right there, it's a little bit less useful because you can't see two drives at the same time. How you do it now is you use F3 and F5 to switch between your drives. 
Now it's the SD to IEC. See, it shows it in the upper right-hand corner. Hit F5 again, it shows the 1541. Now, the good thing is, is it only detects the real devices in there. It's not cycling through 8, 9, 10, and 11, even if there's nothing on them. It goes right from 8 straight to drive 10. So that's kind of cool. The other features, uh, they're, they're fairly similar. You use the cursor keys right and left to go into these directories instead of the enter key. So that's a little different. But most of the features are the same. Um, so for example, we're going into our arcade directory again. There's arcade 102. Hit the right key and we should be able to see the contents of the disk. There it is. Mario Brothers, Moon Patrol. Now, you notice there's, there's no disk copy listed in the right hand side there. What you do is you hit the O button for the other menu and it toggles between a couple different menu items. Make directory, make image, format, there's disk copy. You hit K and it's going to make a copy of the disk just like before. Now in theory that works with dot D64 files, dot D71 and dot D81 files. Um, so it works, it works even a little better supposedly. Um, the other cool thing is you can make directories in, the, in these folders now. That's kind of a cool thing. So one of the other options is that you can actually create a .d64 or a .d71 file using the make image command. That's the letter I to make an image. Uh, now I have not done this yet, so I don't want to give you an example of how to do it and lead you down the wrong path but it does have the capability of creating image files. Now, which version do I like better? Do I like the new version, this 1.0e, or the old version, 1.0d? Depends on what I'm doing. If I'm messing around with lots of files, copying things between two devices, I like to use the one with a split screen. It's really kind of cool. If I want to get fancy, making directories, and safely deleting files off disks, then I'll use the E version. But they're so small and they fit right on the SD card, you can put them both on there. It's really no big deal at all. Now, this little beauty, my Commodore 128 with two drives. It's got drive 8 and drive 9. They're both 1571 drives. And the SD to IEC actually works beautiful on this too. Let's get our tape interface hooked up. Again, if only I had a little longer cable, I'd be happier. Now we're going to switch to 80 column mode. Power on the drives. Now, we're in a nice 80 column mode here, and let me show you why I like to use the 80 column version of draw copy. Now, take a look here. This is just beautiful, where we have the, the two directories, the two folder views. We can cursor around. Let's open up. there and then we can switch between drive 8 or drive 9 here and in 80 column mode this is just absolutely beautiful you get to see so much you can use the actual 128 cursor keys to move around launch things now you can just take this little flash drive plug it right into your PC or Mac copy over the files that you find online the D64 files the PRG files put them in the proper folders Bring them to your Commodore 64, your Commodore 128, your VIC-20, your, Com your Plus 4, whatever you want to do, and just pull the files right off there and run them, or use it to make actual physical disks. There are some programs I found that don't work from the SD to IEC. For example, I wanted to try Ultima 6. Uh, I tried to run it from the SD to IEC card, 
fails every time, no matter how I tried to do it, just absolutely fails. Uh, when I copied them, the D64 files, and created disks with them, ran fine from the floppy disks. Who knows why, but it actually works. Uh, which brings me to the final point I want to bring up, and that is using your SD to IEC with multiple disks. We'll use the Ultima game I was telling you about. Uh, we'll actually go to Ultima 5, I think it is. Now that came on a plethora of disks. Here it is, Ultima 5. You'll see that it came on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 disks. Okay? Now, so how do you tell your SD to IEC how to switch between those disks? You do that with this file called autoswap. Put it in lower case so we can read it. autoswap.lst. Now that's a file that you create on your PC or your Mac. It's just a standard text file. Uh, make sure it's only called autoswap.lst. Inside this text file are the names of the different disks. So I literally just have it where it says u5a.d64, u5b.d64, all throughout there. And then you put it in the autoswap.list, and when you run the program, and the program asks you to insert the next disk, you can hit the little buttons on the front of our unit. There. Top and bottom buttons to switch between the actual disks. Oh, I don't think I can get that high enough up there. So you hit the, the top, the center button, it goes up one disk. Hit the, the bottom button, it goes down one disk to swap between the disks. Now, a relatively new feature on this is to auto generate that file. I created that autoswap.lst manually, but if we go into this folder and we press both. The, the bottom and the middle button at the same time, it's supposed to automatically generate a file for us. Let's see if we can get it. To... Okay, so I apologize. What we have to do is delete the autoswap.lst file that I manually created. Uh, now, I'm, I just happen to be in the uh, DrawCopy64 program. So you can see I'm in my Ultima 5 folder up there. Now, when I hit both of the buttons on the SD to IEC until they blink and release them. It just takes a second. Now when I refresh the directory, it's automatically created the autoswap.gen file. It's that just means it's auto-generated. Now in theory, that's supposed to work the same as autoswap.lst. But I have heard other people say that you then have to rename that autoswap.lst. I suppose we can try it out and see how it works. But it is nice that it will create that file for you for your disk swapping. So, would I recommend the SD to IEC device for your Commodore 64 or other Commodore 8 bit device? Wholeheartedly, five. Commodore chicken heads out of five, without a doubt. This thing has worked well for me for a full week, flawlessly. It's worked on every device I've plugged it into. I love the fact that you can change that disk ID on it relatively easily, and it remembers it. You don't have to change it every time. I love the fact that you can store just about the entire Commodore 64 and, and Commodore VIC-20 library right on the device and everything's accessible, just like the thing was a little hard drive. Um, it's slow. It's a, Without the fast load cartridge, it's just as slow as a 1541 drive. That is because it has to try and emulate a 1541 drive, and the serial interface isn't too fast. But it's not bad. It's something you can live with. Uh, I absolutely love the fact that you can take D64 and D71 files and actually make physical disks out of them because there's still a reason to do that. I've got a, a batch of about 15 actual physical disks that I use uh, for different purposes. You know, Geos, take the, the D.64 file for Geos, 
make an actual disc out of it, boom, boots Geos just fine on my Commodore 128. Uh, I would say, absolutely without a doubt, pick this little guy up. Uh, they range from 40 to $60, depending on what version you get, what kind of adapter you get with it to give it power. You can use the user port, you can use uh, the, the data set port, you can buy it with a USB power adapter, which is kind of the way I think I would do it if I had it to do all over again. But uh, I'm fine with it the way that it is. Uh, wholeheartedly recommend it. And while you're on the Futures 8-bit website, take a look at all the other cool things they have. These guys are, are incredible. They, they do a really good job of, of supporting our old 8-bit machines. And uh, next review, I'm going to be reviewing the VIC-20 penultimate cartridge, which is a marvel. Uh, but for now, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing signing out from Chicken Head Chronicles.